For almost 30 years, I have owned and supported the Sega CD and Mega CD formats. Unlike many, my memories of the platform have been quite positive, and I have loved many of its exclusive games, of which there are quite a few you still can't play anywhere else. But for all the love I have given the platform over the years, it has returned me nothing but frustration and additional cost due to hardware failures. Model 1, Model 2, CDX, you name it and I've had it fail in one way or another. So frustrating has my Sega CD time been, I have actually turned almost exclusively to software emulation for its games, something I cannot say I've done with any other Sega system. I have grown tired of the repairs and replacements to hardware that I have always babied and cared for. That is, until I received my most recent addition to my Sega collection, the Terra Onion Mega SD. This cartridge at first appears to be a knockoff of the Virtual Racing SVP cart, and a quick side-by-side -side shows the two to be almost identical. It also happens to be a fully functional flash cartridge capable of playing Sega Master System, 32X, and Sega Genesis games the same way an EverDrive does. But what makes this little cartridge so special is that it also houses a full FPGA recreation of the Sega CD and Mega CD hardware. That's right my friends, it's a freaking Sega CD in a cartridge. Firing up the Mega SD gives you access to its front end by default. This front end acts as a browser for your files and a way to set options for the device. These options are rather simple and pretty self-explanatory, ranging from turning on in-game reset and menu options, setting the proper BIOS for each region of Sega CD game, and using FM sound for the Sega Master System games. Most other options don't really need to be messed with unless you run into problems with specific games. Your folder layout depends on you and how you want to separate your games. Since the Sega CD and Master System have small libraries, I put them in only a handful of folders while the Genesis and Mega Drive games I broke down by starting letter or number. Keep in mind, putting games on your micro SD card, they cannot be zipped up and each one of your CD games must be in its own dedicated folder. You also cannot have compressed sound files, so no MP3s in place of those wave music tracks. Breaking down your files into folders and copying it all to the microSD card is by far the most time-consuming part of the setup here. The Mega SD also acts as a dedicated CD backup RAM cartridge so you have plenty of space to save your games. Games that also have batteries for saves are supported, and the Mega SD even allows up to 8 slots for save states in Sega Genesis and Mega Drive games. The in-game menu access allows you to change multi-disc games should you have any in your collection. Be aware that the Mega SD does not support connectivity of the actual Sega CD and Mega CD hardware, so if your tower of power is all connected up, you'll need to disengage your original unit. Once you are all set up and ready to play, using the Mega SD is a breeze. Simply choose your game and off you go. The FPGA hardware in the Mega SD does an exquisite job playing your Sega CD games. I was point blank stunned at just how few problems I ran into while testing my library of games. I had the unit hang once while loading a game, and I had one that wouldn't load properly until I deleted the file and copied it back to the micro SD card, at which point it worked great. I was also stunned at how easily it gets around the region locking of the original Sega CD and Mega CD hardware, something collectors have had a headache with on original hardware for years. I was able to play my Japanese and European games with no trouble. Feeling like a change of music in your Sonic CD? No problem. Just fire up the Japanese or European version and get the alternate soundtrack. Yeah, 
Trying out some of my favorite Sega CD games went smoothly and I was able to test each one for quite a while with no sound or graphics issues to speak of. Snatcher loaded up and ran like a champ, its gorgeous art and sound coming out of the Mega SD nearly one to one to the original hardware. Devastator's run and gun mech action was there in all its glory as well. Once again, this Japanese exclusive ran on my US system with no trouble at all. I can't have an episode about the Sega CD and not show the Terminator, so I ran it for a couple of stages and again the Mega SD performed admirably. Its rocking soundtrack belted out in all its glory. I needed some shoot 'em up action in the testing suite, so I broke out KO Flying Squadron. The super colorful cute 'em up action raced across the screen again with no trouble and no perceivable downgrades due to the FPGA emulation. Of course, for you fans of full motion video games, the Mega SD does those just fine as well. Night Trap here is a classic that many will want to make sure is on their micro SD card, if nothing more than to watch the intro from time to time. Silphied's amazing cinemas are intact and running well, and I even fired up Samurai Showdown to see how the classic fighter fared via the new hardware. Sound, music, animation, and gameplay all didn't disappoint making sure that Sega CD fans are still able to kick lots of ass thanks to the Mega SD. Master System games run with no problem, and the device even has a physical button on the side to mimic the hardware-based pause button from the original machine. Genesis and Mega Drive games run as expected, with the flash cart functionality being nearly instantaneous on load-up. Choose your game and three seconds later you're playing it, I gave Shinobi 3 some love and of course I just had to load up Vampire Killer to make sure the Japanese stuff loaded with no issues. Once again it loaded immediately and I was in game listening to that awesome music. For shits and giggles I kept loading games to see if I ran into any trouble with anything, but the Mega SD never let me down. Time and time again each game loaded without issue, and I was playing my favorite games. Of note, for those that enjoy the games with Master System FM support, it sounds great here in every game I tried. If you have a Sega 32X, you can even load games for that system as well. I tried the Mega SD out across my entire collection of Genesis and Mega Drive hardware. I played Batman on my Model 2 Japanese Mega Drive with no issues. I also gave the Super Shinobi a try on my Model 1 Mega Drive. Loading a Sega CD game on my Japanese Mega Drives gave me the familiar blue screen of denial, informing me I had a North American Sega CD hooked up to a Japanese system. A quick switch to the auto region fix option in the Mega SD quickly remedied this, and the US version of Sonic CD popped up on my screen without further issue. I made sure I could load a European Mega CD game as well, using the Smurfs as my test software. I continued to test different region software with different hardware units I owned, and all loaded and played as they should. I ended my testing with a run with the much loved Lords of Thunder making sure that it's great soundtrack played with no trouble. I also got curious about my other hardware types for the Genesis and decided to drop it into my Sega Nomad. To my surprise it worked and loaded Sega CD games right up. The issue here is that no CD based audio will play back without physically modding your system. 
The mod isn't hard if you have the soldering skills, but this does create an issue for those that do not want to go that route. I also tried it out in a few of my clone systems. My Retro Mini worked with the Mega SD, loading Sega CD games, but had the same issue the Nomad had, not playing back the CD-based music. I tried both my At Games Genesis systems, the original non-HD and the 2017 HD model, and neither one of these piles of shit would load the Mega SD at all. I come away from this video and my time with the Mega SD and I cannot help but to be truly impressed with what it does and just how well it does it. Games look, sounded and played great and the myriad of options the device gives you went a long way to easing the sting of its hefty price tag. At 232 euros that translates to a little over 250 American dollars and that's before shipping. It even has a few more features I didn't go into depth with here, such as a cheat function for Sega Genesis games and the ability to create custom CD tracks for Genesis cartridge games. All this leads to the question all of you are likely asking yourselves right now. Is this thing worth it? The answer to that really depends on you and how you collect and play games, and how important a system like the Sega CD really is to you. For me, I'm a big fan of the Sega CD, and games like Snatcher, The Terminator, Bari Arm, Lunar, Shining Force CD, Robo Aleste, Batman Returns, Road Avenger, and KO Flying Squadron are regular parts of my retro gaming rotation I want access to. I also appreciated the downsizing of the Sega CD combo, as the Mega SD requires no external power, greatly reducing the footprint and power consumption of the original hardware. Of course, as per my opening statement, the Mega SD also answers my dilemma of continual replacement of failed and troublesome hardware. God willing, this will be the last piece of Sega CD hardware I'll ever need. Well, unless Sega decides to give us a Sega CD Mini. I'm SegaLordX, thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.